Welcome back to this series on Python project-based learning for beginners. I'm Soyuz from Programmies, and in this video, I'll teach you to create your own calculator app in less than 200 lines of Python code. So let's get started. Before we get started with the tutorial, let me first show you what our final calculator app is going to look like. For this video, we'll try to mimic the built-in standard Windows calculator app. So I'll open this file. So here we have the digits to add buttons from 0 to 9 and also a button to add the decimal point. Then we have the buttons to perform the four basic arithmetic operations along with square and square root. Okay, so let me use our calculator to find the product of 23 and 17. So I'll say 23 into 17, I'll press equals to, and as you can see, we get 391 as the answer. Also notice that we have a label that keeps track of the entire expression. So if I want, I can even add the square of 15 to this answer. So I'll say plus 15. And now I'll use the square button to find its square. I'll press equals to, and we get the expected value. By the way, we can also use our calculator with the keyboard. So first, I clear these values using the clear button. And now I'll use the keys to type the expression like 27 times 6 plus 5 minus 3 times 7. I'll press enter. And as you can see, our calculator follows the correct order of operations to give us the right answer. Now, let's learn to build this calculator app using Python and TKinter. Before we get started with the tutorial, I want to mention that we're going to use an object-oriented style of programming to build this calculator. So make sure that you're familiar with object-oriented programming first. You can check our Python object-oriented playlist to brush up on your OOP skills. The link will be in the video description. Remember that the main takeaway from this video should not be just to build a calculator in Python, but also to learn things that are often overlooked, like how to structure your project and write clean, readable Python code. So let's start writing our code. I'll first create a new folder in my workspace. I'll call it calculator. Then I'll open this folder with PyCharm. It's always a good practice to create a new virtual environment for each of our Python projects. This will help us manage dependencies for each project in a separate and isolated environment. So let me open the terminal and create a new virtual environment using the VENV module. I will say python m venv and then the name of our virtual environment i'll also call it venv so i'll say venv i'll press enter now let's activate this virtual environment i'll say dot slash venv slash scripts slash activate for now we are going to use only the built-in tkinter module so we don't have to install any dependencies yet now let's create a file to write all of our python code so i'll create a new file and I'll call it calc.py, so I'll say calc.py. Now, let's start by importing the built-in tkinter module. I'll say import tkinter as tk. Then, I'll create a calculator class that will contain all the components and functionality of our calculator. So, I'll say class calculator. Now, I'll create an init method for the calculator class where I will do all the initializations. So I'll say def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self. And inside this init method, I'll first create the main window of our calculator app using the tk class of the tkinter module. So I'll say self dot window equals to tk dot tk. Then I'll specify the width and height of this window. So I'll say self dot window dot geometry. And I'll specify the size as 375 times 667. This size is also the standard logical resolution for iPhone 8. Now I'll also disable resizing for this window. I'll say self.window.resizable and I'll pass 0, 0. Then I'll also give our app a name in the title bar. So I'll say self.window.title and I'll give it the name calculator. So I'll say calculator. 
Now let me create another method called run to start our calculator app. So I'll say def run and then I'll say self dot window dot main loop. Then outside this class, I'll say come outside this class and I'll say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals to main inside this if statement I create an object of the calculator class called calc so I'll say calc equals to calculator then I'll run the run method of the calculator object so I'll say calc dot run these lines of code will run only when calc.py is run as a script from the terminal. So let me save this file and run it. And you can see that our main window was created with specified dimensions. And we also have calculator in the title bar. Now we're going to create two frames, one for the display and the other for the buttons. So I'll say self.displayFrame equals to self dot create display frame and then self dot buttons frame equals to self dot create buttons frame. Now let's define these two methods. First I'll define create display frame so I'll say def create display frame. Inside this method I'll say frame equals to tk dot frame. Since we are creating this frame inside our main window, I'm going to specify self dot window. I'll also specify the height for this frame. So I'll give it a height of 221. Let's also give this frame a different background color. So I'll first define a variable called light gray. So I'll come here and I'll say light gray. And I'll give it a hex value of f5 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 then I'll come here I'll specify bg the background color as light gray now let's pack this frame to our main window so I'll say frame dot pack and I will specify expand equals to true and fill equals to both these arguments will allow our frame to expand and fill any empty space around it. Finally, let me just return this frame. So I'll say return frame. Now let's do the same for the buttons frame. So I'll say def create buttons frame. And inside this method, I'll create a frame. So I'll say frame equals to tk dot frame. And I'll pass self.window and similar to the display frame, I'll also pack this frame. So I'll say frame.pack and I'll say expand equals to true and fill equals to both. Then I'll also return this frame. So I'll say return frame. Now that we've created the frames, Let's add display labels to our calculator. As we saw in our demo, the calculator app will have two different labels, one to display the current expression and the other to display the total expression. So first, I'll define both the current expression and the total expression. So I'll come here and I'll define self.total expression and I'll set it to zero. I'll do the same for self.current expression. So I'll say self.current expression and I'll set it to zero. Then I'll create a method called create display labels to create these labels. So I'll create the display labels. So I'll say def create display labels. And inside this method, I'll first define the total label. So I'll say total label equals to tk dot label and I'll add it to self dot display frame. So I'll say self dot display frame. I'll also specify the text for this label. So I'll say comma text equals to 
the value of the total expression. So I said self dot total expression. I will also use anchor equals to tk dot e. This will help position the text at the east side of the frame. I will also change the background and foreground colors for this label. So first I will define another constant. I will call it label color. So I will say label color and I will give it the hex value 25265e. Then I will come back here and I will specify bg as light gray and fg the foreground color as the hex value of the label color. So I will say label color. I will also give it a padding in the horizontal direction. So I will say pad x equals 24. Let me also change the font style for this label. So first I will create another constant. So I will come here and I will create another constant. I will name it small font style and I will give it a tuple value of Arial and 16. Now I will come back here and I will specify font equals to small font. Change it to comma. Finally, I will pack this label with expand equals to true and fill equals to bold. So I will say total label dot pack expand equals to true and fill equals to both. For the current label, I will just copy and paste this line. So I will say the same thing and now I will change total label to label. I will change self total expression to self dot current expression. I will also change total label here to label. Then I will come here and I will define another constant. So I will say large font style and I will give it the value Arial comma 40 and also bold. Now I will come back here and I will specify the font now as large font style. Finally I will return total label and label. So I will say return total label comma label. Now I will come back to the init method and here I will say self dot total label. So I will say self dot total label comma self dot label equals to self dot create display labels. Now I will save this file and I will run it and as you can see our display labels have been added. Let's now add the buttons to our calculator. We'll use the grid system to add all the buttons. So first, let me create a dictionary of all the digits and the corresponding positions. So I'll come to the init method and I'll define self.digits as a dictionary. In a standard calculator, the digits start from seven. So first I'll add seven as the key with the value one comma one. We will later use this value to specify that seven should be placed in a cell with row 1 and column 1. Similarly, 8 should be placed in row 1 and column 2. So I'll say 8 and give it the value 1 comma 2. Now I'll copy paste other values. We also have 0 at the center of the last column. So I'll add 0 and I'll give it the value 4 comma 2. Let's also add a decimal point button at position 4 comma 1. So I'll say dot and I'll give it the value 4 comma 1. Now I'll create a method called create digit buttons. So I'll come here and I'll say def create digit buttons and inside this method I loop through our dictionary and add each button to our button stream. So first I'll say for digit comma grade value in self dot digits dot items and for each of these digits and grid values I'll create a button. So I'll say button equals to tk dot button and now I'll place it inside self dot buttons frame. So I'll say self dot buttons frame. 
I'll also specify the button text as digit. So I'll say text equals to digit. But since it's an integer value, I'll also convert it to string before passing it. So I'll say string of digit. Let's also give our button a background color and a foreground color. So first, I'll define white. I'll say white equals to x value f, 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 f. And now I come here and I'll specify BG, the background color, as white, and FG, the foreground color, as label color. Then to place these buttons in a grid, I'll say button dot grid, and I'll pass row as the first element of grid value, which is grid value zero, and column as the second value of the grid value, which is grid value one. I will also specify sticky equals to tk dot north, south, east, west, so that our button sticks to every side and fills up the entire grid cell. I will now call this method from inside init. So I'll say self dot create digit buttons. Now let me save this file and run it. And you can see that our buttons have been added. They look very small at the moment, so let's change that. I'll first define the digits font style. So I'll say digit font style. And I'll give it the value Arial 24 and bold. Now, I'll come here and I'll specify the font as digits font style. I will also remove the border from these buttons. So I'll say border width equals zero. Now let me save this file and run it again. And we can see that a new font style has been added to the buttons. Also, the border has been removed. Our buttons still don't fit the entire window, but we'll fix that once we add all the buttons. So now let's add the basic arithmetic operator buttons. For this, I'll first create a dictionary called self.operations. So I'll come here and I'll say self.operations and I'll paste this value. This dictionary maps the arithmetic operation in Python to their operator symbols. Here, these two values are Unicode values that represent the division symbol and the multiplication symbol. Now I'll create a new method called create operator buttons. So I'll go here and I'll create a new method. So I'll say def create operator buttons. And inside this method, I loop over the previous dictionary. So I'll say for operator, operator and symbol in self.operations.items. I will define button as tk.button. I'll add this button inside self.buttons frame. So I'll say self.buttons frame and I'll specify the button text as the symbol. Let me now define two more constants. So I'll come here and I'll specify a default font style. So I'll say default font style and I'll give it the value Arial and 20. I'll also specify another color. So I'll come here and I'll specify another color called off-white and I'll give it the hex value F8, F A, F F. So I'll say F8, F A, F F. Now, I'll come back here and I'll specify BG, the background color, as off-white. And I'll specify FG, the foreground color, as label color. So I'll say label color. I'll also specify font equals to default font style. I'll also remove the border from these buttons. So I'll say border width equals zero. Now, let's place this button to the button's frame grid. So I'll say button dot grid. We know that the operator buttons should be at the last column and start one row above the digit buttons. So I'll first define a counter variable called i outside this loop. So I'll say i equals to zero. 
And now I'll say row equals to i. I'll specify the column as four and also specify sticky as tk dot north south east west. Finally, I'll increase the value of i by one. So I'll say i plus equals one. I will now call this method from inside the init method. So I'll come here and I'll specify self dot create operator buttons. Let me save this file and run it. And as you can see, the operator buttons have been added. Similarly, I'll create the clear button and the equals to button. So I'll define a new method called create clear button. So I'll come here and I'll say def create clear button. And inside this method, I'll first copy this code and I'll paste it here. Then I will change symbol to C for clear. I will also change the grid values. We know that the clear button will be at the topmost row. So I'll first replace I with zero and also replace four with one. For now, I'll also add column span equals to three so that this clear button will span across three columns. So I'll say column span equals to three. Now let's, now let's define the create equals button. For this, I'll just copy this method and I'll paste it here. I will change create clear button to create equals button. I will change C to equals to sign. Now I'll define another color. So I'll come here and I'll specify light blue as the hex value CCEDFF. Now I'll come back here and I'll specify the background color as light blue. Since our equals button will be at the last row and span across two columns, I'll specify the row as four. The column should be three and it should span across two columns. So I'll say two. Now let's call these methods from the init method. So first I'll come here and I'll define a new method. So I'll say create special buttons. And inside this method, I'll call self dot create clear button and self dot create equals button. Then I'll call the create special buttons from the init method. So I'll say self dot create special buttons. Now I'll save this file and I'll run the code. And we can see that the buttons have been added as specified. Now let's expand these buttons so that they fill the entire space. So I'll come to the init method. And here I'll create a for loop that loops from one to four. So I'll say for X in range one comma five. And inside this for loop, I'll say self dot buttons frame dot row configure. And I'll pass in the value X and I'll also specify weight equals to one. Then I'll copy this line instead of row configure, I'll say column configure. These lines of code will help our rows and columns to expand. Since we specified a non-zero weight, our buttons can now grow to fill the empty spaces. By the way, we also have the zero row. So let's add this row configure for the zero row as well. So I'll come here and I'll specify zero. Then finally, let me finally save this file and run it. And you can see that our buttons finally occupied all the empty spaces. We will add the square and square root buttons later in our program. Now that we have added all the essential buttons, let's start adding functionality to these buttons. By the way, if you're finding these videos useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Before moving to the next section of the video, I want to mention that the programming team has created an app that allows you to run Python from your phone. This app contains bit side lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in Python interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android the links are in the video description. Let's start by making the digit buttons functional. First, I'll create the methods that will update the total label and the current label. So I'll come here and I'll create two methods. First, I'll say def update total label. So I'll say update total label 
Inside this method, I will update the text property of self.totallabel. So, I will say self.totallabel.config and now I will change the value of text to whatever the value of self.total expression is. So, I will say self.total expression. Then I will do the same for the current label. So, I will say define update label. So, I will say update label and I will change self dot total label I'll change the text property to self dot current expression now let me create a method called add to expression that will add a given value to the current expression so I'll come here and here I'll specify new method so I'll say def add to expression this method will take in a value and what I'll do inside this method is I'll append this value to our current expression. So I'll say self dot current expression plus equals to and then the string of our value. Now finally I'll update this current expression. So I'll say self dot update label. Now let's add the functionality of this method to our buttons. So I'll come here and I'll specify the command. So I'll say comma command. And I'll say self dot add to expression and I'll give it the value digit. But since the command has to be a function, I'll wrap our method using the lambda keyword. So I'll say lambda. Then I will remove the initial values of self dot total expression and self dot current expression. So I'll make them empty strings. Let me save this file and run the code. And now I'll press the buttons. Okay, so currently a decimal point gets added to the current expression for any digit button we press. Let's see why that is. So I'll come to the create digit buttons. Okay, so it's because our lambda function uses the digit variable which gets reassigned every time in the loop. Due to this, all the buttons get the last value of digit which happens to be the decimal point. To fix this problem, I'll create a parameter called x and I'll bind it to the digit in each iteration of x. So I'll say x equals to digit and here instead of digit I'll say x. Now let me run this code again and our digit button finally work. Now let's add functionality to our operator buttons. The operator button should append the symbol to the end of the current expression, append it to the total expression and finally clear the current expression for the next entry. I will implement a method called append operator and you'll exactly understand what I mean. So I'll come here and here I'll create a new method. So I'll say def append operator. This will take in an operator. And inside this method, I'll first append the given operator to the current expression. So I'll say self dot current expression plus equals to the operator. Then I'll append the current expression to the total expression. So I'll say self dot total expression oops, total expression plus equals to self dot current expression finally i'll clear the current expression for the next entry so i'll say self dot current expression equals to an empty string finally i'll update both the total label and the current table so i'll say self dot update total label and self dot update label Now I'll add this method to our operator buttons. So I'll come here and similar to before, I'll say command equals to lambda, which will take in a value x and I'll bind it to the operator variable in each iteration. And then I'll say self dot append operator and I'll pass in x. Let's save this file and run it. Now I'll press nine plus and as you can see, the plus operator is first appended to the current expression. Then we appended the current expression to the total expression. And finally, we'll clear the current expression for the next entry. Let's now add functionality to the clear button and the equals to button in a similar way. So first I'll come here and I'll specify the clear method. And what this method will do is simply clear both the current expression and the total expression. So I'll say self dot current expression equals to an empty string. I'll do the same for the total expression. So I'll say total expression 
This will also be an empty string. Now I'll update both of the labels. So I'll say self dot update total label. Oops. Okay, so I'll then update total label as well. So I'll say update total label. Now I'll come here. I'll specify command equals to self dot clear. Next, let's review the eval function before implementing the functionality of the equals to button. The eval function evaluates and returns the value of a valid Python expression. Let me show you what I mean. So first, I'll go to the Python console tab in PyCharm. And here, I'll say eval 2 times 3 plus 3. I'll make it a string. I'll press enter. And you can see that this expression gets evaluated and the final result is returned. We're going to use this eval function to evaluate our total expression when the user presses the equals to button. So now I'll close this tab. I'll come back to my code editor and I'll define the evaluate method here. So I'll say def evaluate. And inside this method, I will first append the current expression to the total expression. So I'll say self dot total expression plus equals to self dot current expression. Then I'll update the total label. So I'll say self dot update total label. Then I will say self dot current expression equals to eval of self dot total expression. I'll also wrap this function with a string function so that a string is written at the end. Now I'll reset the total expression. So I'll say self dot total expression equals to an empty string. Finally, I'll update the current label. So I'll say self dot update label. Now I'll come here and I'll say command, oops, I'll say command equals to self dot evaluate. Let me finally save this file and run it. And now our calculator app should be fully functional. I'll try to find the product of 8 and 9. So I'll say 8 times 9 equals to. And we can see that it gives us the correct answer. We can also reset the expressions using the clear button. So if I press the clear button, these expressions are now removed. Now that our calculator is fully functioning, let's enhance some of its features. First of all, let's add the square and square root buttons to the calculator. Also, when we currently type an expression like 9 times 9, we can see that the actual operator symbol is not displayed. Let's replace these Python operator symbols with the actual operator symbols. Next, if we try to do calculations like 1 divided by 3, we can see that the values currently overflow the window width. So let's truncate our results. Also, if you try to divide by 0, so I'll say 1 divided by 0. So here we get an error message. So let's try to put our eval function in a try block. Finally, we'll also make our calculator app usable from the keyboard. First, let's start by adding square and square root buttons to our calculator. So I'll first come here and I'll remove the column span parameter for the clear button to make room for our square and square root buttons. And then I'll copy paste this code to create the square button. First of all, I'll change the name to create square button. So create square button. Then I'll change the text to x slash u 0 b2. This Unicode value represents the square symbol. I will also change the command to self dot square. Now let's define the square method. So I'll say def square and what this function will do is I'll say self dot current expression equals to eval and I'll evaluate the string which is the self dot current expression and I'll just square it so I'll just do square and finally I'll wrap this using the str method. And I'll update the label. So I'll say self dot update label. 
by the way i also have to change this column to 2 so that it appears next to the clear button similarly for the square root button i'll copy paste both the square button and the square method so i'll copy paste this code i'll change square to sqrt and instead of 2 i'll say 0 0.5 I'll also change the value of the name of this method. So I'll say create QRT button. I'll also change the text to slash U 221A. This Unicode value represents the square root symbol. And then I'll type X. And now I'll change the column to 3. Let's add these buttons inside the self.create special buttons. So I'll come here and I'll add this method here. So I'll say self.create square button and I'll say self.create square root button. So I'll say create square root button. Now I'll save this file and I'll run the code. And as you can see, these buttons have been added. Then I'll try to find the square of 3. So I'll say 3 square which is 9 and then I'll again find the square root oops we forgot to actually add so I'll come here and I'll change the square to square root so now if we run this thing again we try to find the 3 square then find its under root we get the actual output To change the operator symbols, I'll go inside the operate total label method and I'll simply replace the Python operators with their actual operator symbols. So first I'll say expression equals to self dot total expression and now I'll loop through all the operators from the operations dictionary. So I'll say for operator comma symbol in self dot operations dot items. I'll simply replace these values. So I'll say expression equals to expression dot replace. And now I'll replace the operator with the symbol. So I'll also add white space around it. So I'll say F and I'll say symbol. Now I'll change this self dot total expression to just expression. I'll save this file and run it. Let me type an expression like 9 times 9. Now you can see that the operator symbols are being displayed. For truncating the result, I'll go to the update label method and use the slicing operator to limit its length to 11. So I'll add 11 at the end. Now I'll save this file and run the code. And now if I say 1 divided by 3 equals to and we can see that our result no longer overflows the screen. To handle exceptions, I'll come to the evaluate method and I'll put the eval function inside the try block. I'll come here and I'll say try. Now I'll indent this code. If an exception occurs, I'll set the current expression to error. So I'll come here and I'll say accept exception, oops, exception as e. Here I'll just say self dot current expression equals to error. And inside the finally block, I'll say finally, I'll put self dot update label. Now I'll save this file and run the code. And now if I do something like one divided by zero, I'll press equals to, we get error. At this point, our calculator is working correctly. However, it doesn't take inputs from the keyboard. Let's change that. To make our calculator usable from the keyboard, we need to bind the keys of our keyboard to the respective methods from our calculator class. So first, I'll create a method called bind keys. So I'll come here and I'll say def bind keys. And inside this method, I will say self.window, so I'll say self.window.bind and firstly, I'll bind the enter key. So I'll say return. Here, I'll pass the function lambda, which takes in an event. 
and I'll execute self.evaluate. This line of code specifies that pressing the enter key is the same as pressing the equals to button. Now I'll do the same for the digit buttons and the operator buttons. So first I'll loop through all the digits. So I'll say for key in self dot digits. I'll say self dot window dot bind and I'll pass in key and for the function I'll say lambda which is two parameters. The first is the event and the second is the digit. I'll bind the digit to the key and I'll return self dot add to expression digit. Similarly, for the operator buttons, I'll loop through all the operators. So I'll say for key in self dot operators, self dot window dot bind key. And for the function, I'll again define a lambda function. So I'll say lambda that takes in two parameters. The first is the event and the second is the operator. I'll bind the operator to the key and I'll say self dot append operator and I'll pass operator. Now I'll call this method from the init method. So I'll come here and I'll say self dot bind keys. I'll save this file and I'll run the code. Now I'll use the keys of my keyboard to type nine times eight. I'll press enter and our calculator works as expected. Now that we have made our calculator fully functional, let's create an exe file from our calc.py file. This will allow us to run the calculator app from any Windows device without any Python setup. For this, I'll use PyInstaller. PyInstaller is a tool that allows us to convert a Python application into a standalone executable. Let's first install the PyInstaller from pip. So I'll say, so I'll go to the terminal and I'll say pip install PyInstaller. Now that the Py installer is done installing, I'll use it to convert calc.py to an executable file. So I'll say py installer, installer, and I'll say hyphen hyphen one file, hyphen w, and then the name of our script, I'll say calc.py. This one file flag specifies that our executable should be created as a single file. And this w flag specifies that Python should not bring up the terminal while running the calculator GUI. So I'll press enter. So now I'll go to my workspace and we can see that the build and disk folders are created by PyInstaller. Let's open the disk folder and we can see that we have a calc.exe file. Let's open this file and we can see that our calculator app is running from here as well. I hope you found this project helpful. I encourage you to try and add more buttons and modify this calculator as you please. That's it for this video. You can find all the links I mentioned in the video description. If you want more of these videos, let us know in the comments and if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.